Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm going to be your tutor for this section on the efficient market hypothesis. The hypothesis comes in three forms. The strong form, the semi-strong form, and the weak form. And each imply that information at different levels is impounded in stock price. Now, when we talk about efficient markets, what it means is that the amount you pay for a stock or another security and the return that you get when discounted based on the amount of risk that you have will give you a net present value of zero. In other words, there is no way effectively to beat the market consistently. So let's look at the three forms. The strongest form says that all public and private information is impounded in the price of a stock. That means that even if you could get hold of inside information, rather like Gordon Gecko would do in the movie Wall Street, that you couldn't still beat the stock. In practice, this is probably not true. There are constantly cases of rings on Wall Street using uh, privileged information in various ways to get an edge on stocks. For example, uh, getting information about earnings prior to when they should be released during the embargo period, getting early results, for example, of drug trials when they are still confidential and private. Uh, those sorts of pieces of information still can apparently make uh, you make money, and as a result, high-profile uh, rings um, investors have been caught at some point by the SEC in, who are involved in tracking down these sorts of cases. Most likely, therefore, that the strong form is probably not true, and that it is still worth trying to get inside information although most of this is in fact illegal and certainly unethical. The second form is the semi-strong form in which all information is impounded in the price. Now, information in this case means um, historic information on annual reports, anything to, in the news that's been published, anything that the company says that is available to everybody. It's the sort of information that analysts at brokerage companies and investment banks are pour over looking for small pieces of information that might not be impounded in the stock price. As an ex-analyst myself, my experience has been that, in general, it is not possible to do better than the market in terms of analyzing stocks. Sometimes you get, apparently, you've made a good guess or a good call on a stock, and it goes the way you want it, in which case it looks like you're doing well. In other cases, you make bad calls and it doesn't work. Now, occasionally, some people have done very well. Um, whether they're consistent or not, is it's difficult to say, but a good example will be Paul Chanos, the investor, who guessed rightly that the CDOs that were being sold um, prior to the financial crash were in fact overpriced because their grade, um, grade levels were too high as analyzed by S&P and Moody's and as a result sold short on the market and when it collapsed made out um, pretty substantially. But in general information that's public is immediately impounded in the stock and it does change very quickly. If a news headline flashes across the screen that something's happened with a company, the stock price will move in the direction that you would expect very rapidly to impound that information. So the, that is, so that's really essentially saying that it's very, very hard to beat the market without having some way to execute very, very quickly. Uh, Today, high-frequency traders kind of do that by essentially putting in orders that can effectively front-run information so that if you had a news headline that said that uh, it was a very favorable piece of information about a company, 
And fairly quickly after that, orders will be put in to buy that company, and which will then push the price up to meet the new expectations. If you can push your order in in such a way to get in front of those orders, you can make money in, in that sense. But this is essentially front running, which is not really a legal activity. The last um, form is fairly simple. It's basically saying that historic prices have no information in them to tell you where the future goes. Now, there are people like called technical analysts who will take in pricing information and indeed other information like volume and so on, and they will try to find patterns in that that will divine the future. So they will use forms like head and shoulders and double tops and triangles as patterns uh, to indicate where the future of the stock is. Other analysts will use things like moving averages and whether the stock is moving above or below the moving average at any given moment to indicate where, where the stock is likely to go in the future. This has been fairly easy to test in the past and effectively it is. it turns out that it is next to impossible to make any consistent gains in um, mispricing and, and guessing where the market's going to be using historic price patterns. Usually, if one tries it oneself, one finds that there does appear initially to be some gains to be made uh, by being clever with the um, use of past information. But then once you apply transaction costs, all those profits will then disappear very quickly. Now, people do believe that you can do this, and so there is quite an industry out there of both analysts trying to guess prices in the future, and will tell you where they think things are going. Uh, there is a whole host of newsletters that will sell you information on that basis, as well as programs that you can use yourself to try and come up with rules that will beat the market. But pretty generally, the people who make money are those who are selling you the tools, not the investors trying to use those tools to make money. So in conclusion, the efficient market hypothesis basically means that pricing information and therefore the value of securities are fairly priced based on most of the information that's in the marketplace. Certainly, past prices will not be able to get you any consistent gains above the expectations of what you would expect. Um, being an analyst and using public information again almost certainly will not make you any excess profits and only getting doing things that are illegal uh, such as insider information and trading will be able to get you any profits but those of course are constantly being tracked by the SEC that look to prosecute those who are doing so and disgorge their profits and they may even take jail time. So that's the efficient markets hypothesis in a nutshell and which is why Seasoned investors will suggest that if you want to invest in the market, the best thing to do is to buy no-load mutual funds, which essentially track indexes like the S&P 500 as the safest and best way to get money, to get, to get good returns rather than uh, trying to time the market or use other forms of divining the market's direction, and hence making excess profits, which looks like that cannot be done. All right.